Hi, I'm Kelsey from RoughandTumbleFarmhouse.com and today I'm going to show you how to run electric wire underneath a gate in your fence. So as you can kind of see here across this gate we have that goes into our round pen, the electric wire runs right across the top of it. You can kind of see it there. I really want to get this fixed. First of all, it's just obnoxious having to duck under it. It's tough to have people come and do chores for us that get all caught up on it. And you have to say, hey, make sure you duck so you don't not only clothesline yourself but get electrocuted at the same time. Uh, but the other day I was closing the gate. We were moving some goats around and stuff and I closed the gate and was talking to my husband who was carrying our baby. And I wasn't paying attention and the gate swung out and touched the wire and I got shocked more than I've ever been shocked in my life. I literally, like, it froze up my body. It was that bad of a shock. So right then and there, I said, I'm going to get that fence properly situated across that gate so that way it runs, the hot wire runs underneath the fence and not straight across it. So I'm gonna show you how we, we do that process here. Starts out with some digging. my trench dug all the way from gate post to gate post. It's probably about 8 inches deep. I think 8 to 12 inches is kind of standard. Uh, if you have a really high traffic area that gets trampled down, you want to make sure that it's not going to be too shallow because if you do it too shallow, then as it gets worn over, eventually your, your wire might get exposed. Next thing on the list is to bury the wire. So I have this coated wire here. I honestly know what gauge this is um, but this is what's going to be running underneath my fence and I'm going to run it through some of this PEX tubing so that's going to prevent it from getting corroded just in case there's any critters that decide to start burrowing under there it's going to prevent them from chewing it up so this is going to run first and then it's going to have the wire run through it so I have to kind of measure out how much of this PEX tubing that I need and then we should be good to go. I left a fair amount of extra tubing on either end because once I run the, the wire through it, I'm gonna bend that end over because if you have it just sitting up, so you've got your little two openings facing the sky, if it rains, well, when it rains, that moisture can get in there, it can cause corrosion problems. So you wanna leave enough extra on the end, you can bend it over and then staple that to your fence post to keep that moisture out. So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to run my wire through the tubing and then I'm gonna trim that too and then we will uh, we'll start burying so it's really not a long process but it's just kind of one of those putsy things you just don't get to so I'm excited to finally get this done this weekend there's two ways you can do this there's probably more than two ways but two ways I've seen is you can trim your coated wire kind of right where it comes out of the ground and then just run a piece of um, you know either like poly strand wire or if you're using like a like a metal wire you can run that down and connect it or if you want to you can run the coated wire all the way up to where your fence line continues and since I have extra coated wire here and the strip of coated wire if I were to trim the coated wire right where it comes out of the ground I wouldn't be left with enough to do another section of fence, if that makes sense. So to me, it's gonna leave me with one less scrap of little wire if I just use what I've got here and run the coated wire all the way up to where it connects with the fence as it runs along the top here. Now just because I've got that one end, kind of how I like it, I don't want it wiggling around a lot, moving a lot. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill in the dirt because I know on this end I've got plenty to work with and I can fiddle with that, but it'll be easier if everything's kind of in position. So I'm now gonna put dirt back in on top. The fortunate thing I've come to realize is that I don't have my big wide fencing staples that are gonna allow me to 
staple this into place onto the fence post because of course I don't have staples that size on the day I decided to do this project. So uh, it's gonna be kind of loosey-goosey on the ends, but I'll show you how it's going to look. Um, but it'll be buried into place, so it's gonna still work just fine until I can get into town and get some, some staples. Kind of rough and tumble the way everything does around here, but this you can kind of see how this is gonna be kinked all the way, I'm at the wrong angle to bend it, but bend, bent straight down so that that way I'll put a staple in, one kind of up along the side to keep it upright, and then probably one here at the top, and then another staple with this facing downwards. All right, so here's the other side again. I don't have the right size staple, so it's not kind of put to the post the way it should be, but you can see where it's gonna be bent downwards, and then this will be stapled to, to the side of our post here, and then I have it connecting right up here, and there, there's the baby monitor. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to snip the wire right here and I'll just kind of wrap it around this so it doesn't go anywhere on me. And then I'm gonna do the same thing over on the other side and we will be free of this, one of our many booby traps on the farm. So I couldn't post this video without showing you how it was gonna look in the end. So I put a staple down there, as you can see where it's kind of close to coming out of the ground. One up here and then one here to keep it bent to keep the rain out and then this, I need to grab my other size staples but haven't yet, um, will just be stapled then top to the side. Sorry about all the shadows there. But anyway, I just, I couldn't bring myself to post a video without showing you at least how it roughly should look. You guys, I can't tell you how exciting this is, but I can go from here to here and I'm not having to duck. I can guarantee you though for the next few weeks, I'll still be ducking my head just out of, uh, just out of habit. But, Anyway, so that's how simple it is. Basically just digging, running your lines, make sure you have the right size staples so you can actually finish your project the same day you do it. Um, and yeah, that way you're not, like I said, setting booby traps all over your farm for either yourself or for people who are kind enough to come out and do your farm chores. So thanks very much for watching. Please make sure you hit that like button and that subscribe button. New videos every week here at Rough and Tumble Farmhouse about farming, family, food, and forage. Take care.